Welcome to English Language and Literature. Today, we're summarizing William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Let's dive into it. Act 1 of William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, begins with three witches who are planning to meet Macbeth. They discuss their plan to meet him after a battle that is currently underway. In the next scene, we are introduced to Macbeth and Banquo, two Scottish generals who have just fought and won a battle against a rebel army. On their way back, they meet the witches who greet Macbeth as the Thane of Glamis, the Thane of Cawdor, and the future King of Scotland. They also tell Banquo that he will not be king but his descendants will be. Macbeth is surprised and curious about their prophecies, while Banquo is more skeptical. Soon after, Macbeth receives news that he has been made the Thane of Cawdor, fulfilling the first part of the witch's prophecy. This makes him wonder if the second part of the prophecy, about him becoming king, could also come true. Meanwhile, King Duncan hears about Macbeth's bravery in battle and decides to visit him at his castle. Lady Macbeth receives news of the king's arrival and immediately starts to plot his murder. She urges her husband to kill Duncan and take the throne, telling him that he is a coward if he does not seize this opportunity. Macbeth is initially hesitant but eventually agrees to carry out the murder. Lady Macbeth prepares for the crime by drugging the guards and leaving their daggers for Macbeth to use. He kills Duncan in his sleep and brings the bloody daggers back to his wife. She tells him to go wash his hands and act innocent. After the murder, Macbeth is plagued by guilt and hallucinations. He hears a voice saying, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. He also sees the ghost of Duncan, which terrifies him. Lady Macbeth tries to reassure him that everything will be fine, but the guilt and fear continue to consume him. The act ends with Macbeth and Lady Macbeth feeling both triumphant and tormented by their actions. They are now rulers of Scotland, but at a great cost to their souls. Act 2 of William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, begins with a scene where Macbeth and Lady Macbeth discuss their actions after the murder of King Duncan. Macbeth is still consumed with guilt and fear, and Lady Macbeth tries to convince him to stop worrying and to focus on their future plans. As they are talking, they hear a knocking at the door, which startles them. Macbeth goes to answer the door and returns with bloody hands, indicating that he has been up to something. Lady Macbeth tells him to go wash his hands and to put on his nightgown so that they can pretend that they have been asleep during the entire incident. The knocking at the door continues, and it is revealed that the porter has been drinking and joking around. He speaks in a humorous way about the gates of hell and the people who might be waiting to enter. His speech provides a comic relief from the tension of the previous scene. The next morning, Macduff, the Thane of Fife, arrives at the castle to wake the king, but he discovers that Duncan has been murdered. He is shocked and horrified, and he immediately suspects that Macbeth is the culprit. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth try to act innocent, but they are clearly nervous around Macduff. When the king's body is discovered, Macbeth kills the guards in a fit of rage, claiming that they were responsible for the murder. This is his way of covering up his own guilt and trying to deflect suspicion away from himself. After the discovery of the murder, Macbeth is crowned as the new king of Scotland. However, he is still tormented by guilt and fear. He decides to visit the witches again to find out more about his future. The witches show him three apparitions, an armed head, a bloody child, and a child with a crown and a tree in his hand. They tell him that he should beware of Macduff, that no man born of a woman can harm him, and that he will not be defeated until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. Macbeth is relieved by these prophecies and becomes even more confident in his own invincibility. However, he is still haunted by the ghosts of his victims and the guilt of his actions. Act 3 of William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, opens with Banquo expressing his suspicions about Macbeth's rise to the throne. He is worried that Macbeth may have achieved his position through dishonest means and wonders if his own descendants will ever become kings, as the witches predicted. Macbeth becomes increasingly paranoid and decides to hire two murderers to kill Banquo and his son Flens. He is afraid that Banquo's descendants will take the throne and that they will pose a threat to his own power. 
The murderers successfully kill Banquo but Flens manages to escape. At a banquet, Macbeth is haunted by the ghost of Banquo and begins to act erratically in front of his guests. Lady Macbeth tries to cover for him and convince the guests that he is just ill. However, Macbeth's behavior becomes more and more erratic and he finally confesses to the murder of Banquo. Macduff, who has become suspicious of Macbeth, decides to flee to England to join forces with Malcolm, the son of the former king, and prepare to overthrow Macbeth. Macbeth is informed of this and decides to take preemptive action by sending murderers to kill Macduff's family. In the final scene of Act 3, Macbeth visits the witches again and demands to know more about his future. The witches show him a vision of a line of kings, all descended from Banquo, and Macbeth becomes even more paranoid and fearful for his own safety. The witches also tell him that he will not be defeated until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane, further fueling his confidence in his own invincibility. Act 4 of William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, opens with the witches summoning their familiars and preparing a cauldron for their next meeting with Macbeth. They chant and cast spells, and Hecate, the goddess of witchcraft, appears to criticize the witches for meddling with Macbeth without her permission. She plans to lead Macbeth to his downfall by deceiving him with illusions and false prophecies. Macbeth meets with the witches, demanding to know his fate. They show him a series of apparitions, an armed head, a bloody child, and a crowned child holding a tree. The apparitions predict that he will not be defeated until Burnham Wood moves to Dunsinane, and that no man born of a woman can harm him. They also warn him to beware of Macduff. Macbeth, feeling invincible, orders the murder of Macduff's family, including his wife and children. Meanwhile, Macduff meets with Malcolm in England, and they plan to raise an army to overthrow Macbeth. Lady Macbeth, tormented by guilt over the murder of Duncan, descends into madness, sleepwalking and confessing to the murder in her delirium. She eventually dies, consumed by her guilt. As Macbeth prepares for battle against the forces of Malcolm and Macduff, he receives news that Burnham Wood is moving towards Dunsinane. This news terrifies him, as he believes it fulfills the witch's prophecy. Malcolm and Macduff's army marches towards Dunsinane carrying branches from Burnham Wood as camouflage, fulfilling the second part of the prophecy that Macbeth cannot be defeated by any man born of a woman. In the final battle, Macbeth kills young Siwit but is eventually confronted by Macduff. Macduff reveals that he was not born of a woman but was instead, untimely ripped, from his mother's womb through a caesarean section, thus fulfilling the witch's prophecy. Macduff kills Macbeth and is hailed as the new king of Scotland. The play ends with Malcolm being crowned as the new king and calling for peace and order to be restored to the land. Act 5 of William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, opens with Lady Macbeth's doctor and gentlewoman discussing her strange behavior. Lady Macbeth has been sleepwalking and obsessively washing her hands, trying to wash away the bloodstains of the murders she and her husband have committed. The doctor and gentlewoman conclude that Lady Macbeth is suffering from a guilty conscience and decide to keep a close eye on her. Meanwhile, Macbeth prepares for battle against Malcolm and Macduff. He is confident in his own invincibility, believing the witch's prophecy that he cannot be defeated until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. However, he is plagued by guilt and fear, and begins to see visions of the murdered Banquo and others. As the armies of Malcolm and Macduff march towards Dunsinane, they disguise themselves with branches from Burnham Wood, thus fulfilling the witch's prophecy. Macbeth's soldiers begin to desert him, and he is left with a small group of loyal followers. Macbeth confronts Macduff in battle, and Macduff reveals that he was not born of a woman but was instead, untimely ripped, from his mother's womb through a caesarean section, thus fulfilling the witch's prophecy. Macduff kills Macbeth, and the battle is won. Malcolm is crowned as the new king of Scotland, and he calls for peace and order to be restored to the land. He also honors those who fought against Macbeth, praising their bravery and loyalty. The play ends with Malcolm addressing the audience, suggesting that a new era of stability and prosperity is about to begin in Scotland. That's the summary of Macbeth. Thanks for watching, 
and let us know in the comments which classic work you'd like us to summarize next.